Hello and welcome to The Old Flyers. The story of Operation Chastise, more commonly known as the Dam Busters Raid, is well known. This large-scale attack on German dams during the Second World War took place overnight on May the 16th, 17th, 1943. Wing Commander Guy Gibson led Squadron X, formed from Squadron 617, on this raid to destroy three dams in the Ruhr Valley in Germany. Three waves of aircraft and crew, consisting of a total of 133 in 19 aircraft, were deployed. These dams were protected by torpedo nets in the water and anti-aircraft guns. The Mona, Ida and Sorpe dams were the primary targets and the Inepi, Lister and Daimel dams were alternates. There was a high price to pay. 53 of the crew were killed in the raid and three were captured. The destruction of the Mona and Ida dams and the damage to the Sorpe was possible by the use of a revolutionary bomb, the bouncing bomb. It was Barnes Wallace who realized that a skipping bomb could bounce over the torpedo nets to settle deep and explode against the wall of a dam. Later that same year, Barnes Wallace proposed another project using a smaller bouncing bomb dropped from a low flying mosquito aircraft. Remarkably, after so many years, actual footage of these tests can be shown. It is relatively easy to bomb railway tunnels. A bomb placed near the entrance will cause a cave-in, blocking the entrance, but that is soon bulldozed clear. It will be another year before the massive 5.4 metric ton Tallboy and 10 metric ton Grand Slam bombs were devised. Those bombs could penetrate many metres underground even through reinforced concrete, creating an earthquake that could cave in tunnels. However, Barnes Wallace's idea was to lob a smaller bomb into the tunnel to explode some way inside and achieve the same effect. For this precision, air crews would need training. A railway tunnel suitable for the purpose was found at Mayen Cloch, Pembrokeshire, in Wales, and apologies for the pronunciation, Welsh friends. A former British telecom engineer, Dewey Davies, had been instructed to extend a telephone line to the test site, which allowed contact with RAF Angle. He connected the telephone, which was linked to the Narbeth Exchange. At the exchange, a supervisor had been there all night to deal with calls on this special line. Dewey was standing beside Barnes Wallace when they heard a loud droning sound and they all turned to see a low-flying mosquito aircraft with a round ball spinning in its belly. The aircraft flew low over the railway line and jettisons its load 100 yards in front of the spectators. The wooden ball spun along the railway track and into the mouth of the main Kloch Kloch railway tunnel scoring a direct hit. Mr. Wallace literally jumped for joy, according to Mr. Davies. Dewey Davies believes he was the only civilian to witness the high ball, a variation of the bouncing bomb, at the test. They dropped several of these wooden circular bombs, said Mr. Davies. Two or three entered the tunnel and one bounced onto the field above the entrance of the tunnel. I well remember Barnes Wallace looked a typical country gent dressed in a tweed suit. He had the bottom part of his trousers tucked into his socks and wore very heavy shoes. He was exactly as Michael Redgrave depicted him in the film The Dam Busters. Fast and low, the mosquitoes come in, release their practice bomb and climb out over the ridge. After the test, the wooden balls were collected by the army officials and burned to hide the evidence. Mr. Davies 
was then invited back with the party to have tea in the old royal coach. Afterwards, Davy said, the rear admiral gave me a one pound note, which was half a week's wages, and told me to forget all you have seen. The test bombing was carried out by 618 Squadron, who flew from RAF angle. There are no specific documented instances of high ball bombing being used specifically on railway tunnels in occupied Europe in World War II. The potential was there if the strategic importance of the tunnel warranted such an approach. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to encourage new content.